RTX PC cases are slowly becoming popular in the world of PC building. They come in all shapes and sizes and can dramatically range from all sorts of prices. So I'm always in search of a new ITX case to review. Today, we'll take a look at the Sliger SM560. We'll check out its design, structural quality, build into it, and find out what the temperatures are like when playing games. But before we dive in, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, turn on notifications so you never miss a video, and all the products featured in this review will be linked down below. So this is the Sliger SM560, an 11 litre mini ITX PC case. That's 335 millimeters in length, 159 in width, and 208 in height. There are actually four different models in the SM series from Sliger. They range from a short and slim case, which can fit a two slot GPU, to a tall and wider case that can fit a three slot GPU, with either a radiator and fans, or multiple hard drives at the top. The one I have is in between these versions. A case that can fit a three slot GPU, but with no space for a radiator or fans, or hard drives at the top. I chose the 11 litre model because I preferred a smaller case, but with the ability to install a free slot GPU just in case I ever needed to. If you go onto Sliger's website, there is a ton of customizations you can apply to the case of your choice. Aside from choosing the different sizes and colours for the case, for the GPU and motherboard side, you can choose to either have a window, unvented or vented panel. You can choose whether you want brackets for extra hard drive storage or an extra radiator on the side with many more accessories to add on. So there is plenty of options there, and I highly recommend you guys have a look on their website if you're interested. Okay, back to the case. I really like the way it looks. It has these distinctive corner edges where the aluminium breaks up the design to expose the galvanized steel frame of the chassis. I personally like the black and white contrast, and the overall design has a sci-fi feel about it. It kind of reminds me of the Fantex P600S I reviewed a few months ago. Click on the link above if you want to check that out. I put them side to side for comparison, and they sure do look similar. It's like the P600S had a little baby, an ITX baby. The overall build quality is superb. The outside panels are made of aluminium, which gives this case a good weight to it and feels structurally robust. The only weak parts I can find is the plastic perforated top side and the window panels, as they both easily flex. Speaking of flex, to get inside to the case, you kind of have to forcefully pull the sides off, and the window panels feel a bit flimsy. So removing the window panels a dozen times over time could possibly bend and eventually warp the acrylic sheet. I mean, I do like the clean design as there are no outer screws to unscrew to get into the case, but I would recommend being extra careful when removing the window panels. The other issue is dust, as the vented panels you can order have huge gaps for airflow, but no dust filters. So it will probably be wise to open up the case once in a while to remove all the dust. Inside, you can only fit an ITX motherboard, obviously, to the left, there is space for an SFX power supply. On the other side, you can either have a two slot or three slot GPU with a maximum length of 305 millimeters. Below, there is space to fit two 120 millimeter case fans, or you can buy extra bits like the hard drive or SSD brackets from Sliger's website to replace one of the fans instead. Along that, you can also fit a 120 millimeter radiator and fan with a combined thickness of 72 millimeters which means that will limit your GPU length to 187mm. At the back you have slots for the motherboard I.O, PSU cord and a free slot GPU. At the front is the wiring for the I.O and power button. And as you can see, there isn't a whole lot of space for cable management here, so hiding your cables here will be limited. Here you also have a removable hard drive plate that can hold up to two 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs. And lastly, the power button is situated at the top. It has an LED ring design around it, which will stay lit when your PC is on. And these are the four panels I'll be using during the build video and thermal test. I do like it when PC cases give you an option for different side panels. So, like in every PC case I review, I'll build into it by taking my existing parts from the one and only PC I have. It's a bit tedious as it's the only computer I edit on, and I always pray nothing goes wrong otherwise I'm screwed. But until I can afford to build another PC, I'll have to stick to these parts. Instead of the Noctua cooler I currently have in my PC, I'll be using the CryoRig C7 CPU cooler, simply because I hear it's more efficient than the Noctua. And let's be honest, it looks better too. So these are all the parts I'll be using. There'll be links to all of them down below in the video description. So check them out. Okay, let's get building.
Building into this case was relatively easy, although cable management is incredibly tricky as with any small case. Some of the cables were so long I had to stuff them in the front compartment next to the SSD drives. And I also had to tie a bunch of these cables inside the case so they won't touch the fans at the bottom. Now for the thermals. I did four different tests based on the configuration of the case's side panels. I was playing Battlefield 5 at 1440p on a 144Hz monitor with the CPU, GPU and case fans on auto fan speeds and the bottom case fans were used for exhaust. In setup 1, I used both vented panels. Average temps for the CPU was 67 degrees and the GPU was 60 degrees. So pretty good temperatures so far. In setup 2, I had a window panel for the CPU and a vented panel for the GPU. The CPU reached a whopping 89 degrees, so clearly the window has blocked any airflow coming in, whilst the average temps for the GPU was still 60 degrees. Setup 3, the CPU had a vented panel with temps at around 67 degrees, meaning thermals remained the same as setup 1, whereas the GPU temps went up to 62 degrees with the window panel, which is only an increase of 2 degrees compared to setup 1 and 2. And lastly, in setup 4, I used both window panels. The CPU is still at 89 degrees and still suffocating, whereas the GPU temps sat around 64 degrees, which is quite surprising as it's only 4 degrees more than the vented panel test. It's probably because the placement of the exhaust fans is in favour of the GPU, and that the GPU's fan is really efficient. So, clearly it's best to use the vented panels as temperatures start to rise when you use the window panels, especially when it's used for the CPU. And if you really want to use a window panel for the CPU, I would go for an AIO configuration. And here is a test I did for four different games using only the vented panels, just so you know what to expect if you plan to play your favourite games with this case using a similar configuration. I really like this case. Personally, this is one of my favourite looking RTX cases out there, although I would have liked if they had made this version slightly taller, just tall enough to fit another set of fans on top. So the intake would be at the bottom and the exhaust at the top for better airflow. I know, you can probably go for the SM570, which is the model up that has room for a 240mm radiator and fans. But personally, I prefer an air-cooled system over AIO systems and to have a case that would fit a set of fans only at the top would aesthetically look more pleasing to me in terms of case design. So that's the Sliger SM560 guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And be sure to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and all the parts featured in this review will be linked in the video description below. Anyway guys, I'm Andy Django, and I'll see you in the next video.